Welcome back to Always Evolving. And please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow me on social media at Coach Mike Bear. Also, uh, you all may know I have a new book out called One Decision, The First Step to a Better Life, which is all about how making one decision can transform your life. And the next guest, hopefully I can help her make some decisions that are authentic to her that could better her life. You know, I met her on the program, The Doctors, which is a television show on CBS. And The Doctors um, introduced me to Brooke and we got to know each other. And part of being on that episode together, we figured, hey, let's come together. Let's have a chat. Uh, let's see. Let's continue the conversation. But Brooke, thank you for for opening up about your story. And why don't you also tell everyone why you ended up going on the doctors? Sure. I you know it was one of those things I have been explaining to my friends that I feel frozen, that I just I feel stuck. And so it was the episode they were looking for somebody that felt stuck and just all of the description of what they were talking about was absolutely me. And that it was amazing then when they talked about you and that they were going to have you, you know, be on the show. And I was like, this is absolutely what I need. And the direction that I like, want to go but didn't know how to go and so it's been an amazing journey already so far as as quick as it's been uh so what you give everyone a little bit of a history about you i mean you're you were chief of staff for barbara bush and you were feeling stuck you moved to new york like give everyone kind of the landscape of what's been going on for you yeah i mean i have had i have an amazing resume which i feel okay saying because I feel like I've been so fortunate and lucky and just really at the right place at the right time with so many things. So, you know, I worked for Barbara Bush and then continued to work for her and for President Bush up until they both passed away just a few years ago. And I still do some or have been doing some things for the family, which is great. And then, you know, I worked for the PGA of America and the Ryder Cup. I worked for Major League Baseball. I've had my own business for the last 18 years and have just had amazing clients from the, you know, political world, but also the heads of Fortune 500 companies. And it's just, it, it, it's been fabulous. And then COVID happened and, you know, things just kind of changed. And, and, I, and I heard when we spoke on the doctors, you were living in New York and now you've moved out of New York and you're living in DC, right? I have. So some of what came out of that TV show was, you know, just the reality that, you know, how much time am I spending every day on the things that I'm trying to achieve? And I think that's kind of a continuous thread that you, I've been listening to a lot of your podcasts and read your first book. And it's, it's one of those things, it, it, it sounds so basic, but for someone who's stuck, we need to hear that basic line of, okay, this is what you want. Well, then what are you doing to get there? And mm-hmm. so I finally had to admit that I was at the point where I need help from my friends. And so I had I had reached out to my friends on kind of a work level, but now I realized I needed to go a little bit deeper. And I, you know, I put a message on Facebook, basically kind of admitting defeat it felt like and saying, you know what, I, I need help. Um, I need I need some, I need work. And so it was amazing. I've had several of my, you know, kind of Facebook friends with a larger community, but that have come kind of to, they've answered the call and have said, okay, here are some different projects. And one of those projects is in DC. It's uh, just for a couple of months, but it was something, it was enough to say, okay, this is This is fabulous. This is what's here. And so I need to take this next step. What is the project? What are you doing for work in DC? Or excuse me, worked with on Capitol Hill, you know, 23, five years ago, they had started a private school in uh, uh, Southeast Washington, DC. And so I've been involved with that school for about five years. And so I'm now helping them kind of create their COVID response program and bringing their students back and some different kind of events that they are 
trying, you know, not events, but just the, the event of the world now and how they even do parents picking up packets and just a lot of the logistics because mm. right up until this point, it's a smaller school, it's a public school, it's, it's, or excuse me, it's a private school. It's phenomenal, but they've had to focus on getting laptops to the students and then getting software that they need to do, you know, distance learning and all the things that, that a small private school doesn't have a lot of resources to tap into. And so they've been focused on that and now we're going to help them kind of with their next steps. Got it. So are you living with a friend too? No, I put, again, put that out in the universe and said I needed a place. And so I was fortunate to find a place where uh, some folks had, they moved in with their family in South Dakota. They just had a baby. And so they've left their home for now. And so I packed up all of my things and brought them to DC and driving a U-Haul through Manhattan definitely made me feel like I was stronger than I knew I could be. So it sounds like prior to this moment of before it was a quiet, quiet desperation, and then it became a very loud desperation. And in that being a loud desperation, then you were like, F it, I'm just going to put it out there that I'm struggling. Uh, I need to find work. And when you did that, work came, would that be right? Yes, okay. absolutely. So why just out of curiosity, just because I think a lot of people struggle with asking for help, why do you think you had to reach the point of total desperation? Well, I mean, that's what's so difficult about the world right now is for many of us, you know, my industry is completely gone. The event, the wedding industry, it doesn't really exist right now. And so we just keep, you know, you listen to the news and we keep thinking, okay, by summer, it'll be better. All right. By winter, it'll be better or something like it. We're just kicking that can a little bit further down the road. And so for me to take on smaller projects that it's, you know, if you're, my salary is completely gone. And so to take smaller projects and even, you know, to do an hourly position, it's like, you have to weigh the pros and cons of that work taking me away from looking for a job that is more in my career that pays, you know, similar to what I had before. And so, you know, sometimes you just don't know, do I, do I spend time doing something that I wouldn't necessarily be doing, even though I may enjoy it, but. You know, I think um, it's interesting because um, sometimes we, the reason you got into event planning or wedding and such, my assumption would be because you became passionate about it as well. You enjoyed it. Uh, you probably are good at organization. Um, and so that could carry out into a lot of different arenas. Um, but I think for a lot of people, especially during COVID, they've had this mindset of work equals money, where it can become relatively transactional, you know, like I still do so many things in my profession for free. Like I have a group on Tuesdays. Uh, at 5 p.m. That is me bringing in an expert. I probably spend three to four hours a week trying to get the right person to speak, send the instructions, speaking at, but I do it for free, right? Like I'm passionate about it and it keeps my energy and mindset and inspiration in the space. And, you know, I wonder if there's an opportunity to also alongside what you're doing do stuff because virtual events are events like like for all you know there's a whole new marketplace um because even even i i did a survey of how many people are going to be willing to take the vaccine and it was like 45 percent wouldn't once it's out and so my assumption is this could be going on for a while in terms of what's happening and what's going on and you know, I think like, I'm wondering, I, I, I mean, I'm talking out loud, but part of me is like, okay, you're working for the schools and it's a job and it's part time for a few months and it may develop into something. But I wonder if there's an opportunity for you to orchestrate online events. Yeah, and it is, 
New York was a little bit of a challenge in the beginning. Well, it's still, you know, I just left, what, three, four days ago. But the, the difficulty there was immediately when this happened, it was, okay, I want to volunteer. I want to get involved. I want to stay active and do things. And there it became a transportation issue because I don't want to go on the subway. I don't want to get in a taxi. So I could only do things that were really within walking distance. And so, you know, as time went on, my neighborhood and everything became smaller and smaller. My world got smaller and smaller. So I've, you know, by leaving the city that I love and I, you know, I, I want to be back there, but by leaving it, I realized that, all right, I, I need, you know, something's got to give. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm in a place where I can have my car and go and, you know, find out what places need people and get back to kind of the human being side of the world, whether you're working for money, like you said, or you're just giving back as a person and having that kind of connection. Let me ask you a question. All right. So, so on a scale, the one to 10, how much do you like organizing events? Um, I mean, it's, I, I guess I would have to say probably 11, 12, 13. You love it. I, it it's how my brain works. Okay. I, wake I got up you. And I it. How many online <laughs> events, how many, how many online events have you done since COVID started back in March? Uh, participated in no, or worked no. for? No, worked like on. ran, like organized. Yeah. Zero. Zero. But okay. Okay. That's okay. But there's been zero, right? And that's your passion. And well, sorry. No, no, go ahead. My passion is watching people come together. It's the food, it's the smell, it's the touch of paper and stationery. And so, you know, the word virtual just gives me like makes me cringe. But what would be I got you. I listen, listen, I'm with you. My idea of virtually at first virtually speaking to you and not speaking to you in person made me cringe. My idea of having to run a global empowerment group over the Internet made me cringe. Me having to provide online treatment at my treatment center made me cringe. Right. Like so many things about it made me cringe and I fought against. Right. And then it becomes until you get that spark of inspiration. And you're like, aha, there's benefits because the opportunity is you could live anywhere. You could be anywhere. And, and you haven't done it much. So some of it is you haven't done it, but yet you're going, ooh, it's making me cringe. And I believe that like, look, I have different projects going on where, uh, I would need someone helping. I have a book coming out, right? And I have different book events. If you want to build your resume on a, a, a helping launch one of my book events, which it's there's details involved in it, all of a sudden you can be like, yeah, I just did a book. I did a book event for a New York Times bestselling author. He uh, brought me in and I, you know, coordinated. And all of a sudden, for all you know, you may enjoy it, right? Like, I know it's not the... It's look, this podcast was supposed to be like a show. I had a universe to side wheel that would help people chew. It was fun and ex it was a whole thing, right? But the universe decided to throw whatever it was at it. And it also created an opportunity where you and I are connecting. And we would not have connected if this didn't happen. And I just wonder if you started playing in the online event space, because I see it being a big corporate demand for it, especially for several years to come. And you can still keep, you know, your, your eyes open to other things that are going to happen in person, but the marketplace has really shifted. And I wonder if, I wonder if you could enjoy it. Right. Well, the other kind of layer to that is you know which i have to stop focusing on but one of the reasons in moving to new york was also for social reasons i had had my own business for 18 years and i had worked by myself which is you know even though i had an office i went to every day it's 
it was still me in that office. And so I, you know, I wanted to do something where I was working with human beings at a desk, having challenges and I get that's gone. And you're absolutely right. Like it's not, I need to stop looking at it. Like it's something that is permanent and it's something that I can't, work around. I mean, I've done it for 18 years, so I could suck it up and do it for a few more in a different twist of my industry. Listen, this is what I'm willing to do for you. Now, how, how much do you need to make to do something? Or are you trying to get the, the question becomes, in my opinion, you got to get in the game. Like you got to get in the game because then all of a sudden you're going to get inspired. You could pitch yourself. You could have testimonials, but you got to get in this online game. You got to get in it. And and even though it's not what we want, it's not ideal. We don't get to feel the fabric of the paper. We don't get to we there. It is an opportunity because you could still be in the game and get in the game. And if you're able to change your thinking about it, what would you do? For let's say there's a virtual event, which we all have been on so many of these zooms. We've been on so many of these online things. What could you bring to it or what would you change to make them better? I mean, essentially everything that I have been doing up to this point is the exact same because it's all logistics, whether it's the logistic of working with the AV at a hotel or the logistics of working with AV on you know, how do you get all of these people on Zoom? So I think the hesitation for me comes from the creative side because I'm the logistics brain and that's how I work. So when I look at some of the creative, you know, I can do creative in person, but I'm more tentative. Well, how do you make this Zoom event different from that Zoom event? But it's also something that because I'm hesitant on it, I haven't even looked at it and said, well, how do you make this stuff? All right, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you three online opportunities that I have right now, and tell me which one you think is the most inspiring. Now, look, this may turn into something where I pay you. I think like you first got to you got to get skin in the game, and I think it could be good for you if you're with me. It's not that I'm trying to look for free labor. I'm just saying get in the game, so then you can go to people and be like, "Well, I did this," and I'll be like, "She was fantastic," which you probably will be. Right. So I have I have my empowerment group every Tuesday, which is people from all over the world, which started during covid, where people are looking at ways to better their lives. We have a bunch of protocols. I have an email list. I send out a text. I'm really annoyed with how we present the guest every week. Like I get frustrated because I'm like the wording doesn't feel right. Or how are we getting someone to go? I got to show up for this because it's free. I also have a book where I do different book events. Um, so like I'll be partnering with different bookstores where they'll have me do like a virtual book signing. And again, it's the details. It's how do we introduce it? What content do I need to put out? What, what, and some of this is just how to market it. Like how am I actually presenting of myself and it's packaged and it's consistent, right? Um, I also have um, like different events that I'm, I'm speaking at, which like I can tell you, I just got hired for an event mid-January, pays very well, and it's 45 minutes over Zoom. And if they're paying me very well, they're paying their event person very, very well because it's a three-day event and it's a, it's it's there, right? But I think mainly for me, it's like, it's something around the book or it's um, something in regards to some of these free groups I do. I don't know if either one of those are interesting to you. Yeah, I love the idea of the book events. Uh, I'm a big audiobook person. I'm a big book person in general. And that one, that's a no brainer for me. Um, okay. That's fun and exciting. And I attend those type of events. Uh, the speaking thing as well, that is something 100% that, you know, those are all things that I do and I get excited about, especially what you're talking about with kind of continuing the brand and being on message and 
you know, even with the guests that are there being able to take being on brand and make it resonate with the people that you want to attend in that demographic in that, you know, that different area. So um, I've been on your Tuesday yeah. evening chat, which are fun. They're so fun. It's fun to see how many people are on them and from where, you know, they're calling in from all over, which is great. But that one is definitely less interesting. Cool. So book event. So if I got a bookstore to do an event, like which I can arrange, um, where I do a virtual book signing or I have an in conversation with, um, you know, something like that is low hanging fruit. I can easily get that over to you. Um, and again, that way you're getting in the game. So like when you start to meet with different people and all of a sudden you're going to go, cause that's what I'm like. I sometimes feel like if I were you, I would go get three or four of these free events that you're going to do online because you're going to get better and better. And you're not going to end up a year from now going, Holy shit, I should have just got on that freaking way back in the day and not been so stubborn because it wasn't the way I liked it to be, right? I'm a control freak. I'm an event planner. I mean, that's... Yes, but you're also, you're an event planner, but you're not doing events right now because you have a story that you're telling yourself. And so, I, if you want, I would be willing to get you it. Uh, it's not pain initially, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Would it's you want to do it? For sure. Okay, so you're going to do a book event with me and I'll figure out what it's going to be. And and I think that's really like the solution is is just starting to get yourself back in playing. And, you know, it may involve like you figuring out like what technology you need to learn or what you need to bring to it or how to do it a certain type of way. But you can use me as a total guinea pig. Perfect. And then what you have is you have proof of concept that you can go sell. Confidence. And and concept, because if so, you, it's really hard for you right now to go into a corporation or a business and say, yes, I did event planning. And they're like, OK, well, we do it over Zoom. Do you know about this code? And we like this platform. What platform do you like? And you're going to be like, um, well, you know, it's, it's tough until you until you've gone through the crises or the headaches. It's hard to know the different waves that could hit. And that's part of what made you probably good at event planning. If you looked at yourself day one versus three years later, I'm sure your game was totally different, right? Right, right. So much you have to learn along the way. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, that is one thing I have loved about COVID is how... So it's almost kind of saying this is against everything I've been saying, but all of the different, you know, free different event, not all of them are free, but mostly free events that are online that, mm -hmm. you know what, you sign up for and you kind of the way that you participate. And so I've been attending a lot of these different things virtually and it is, it's been pretty cool just to see how people have come together that way. Yeah. Like I have a, I have an event in January. And what's happened is in the publishing world, Amazon has dominated everything. And the independents, the mom and pops who can't get you the book within, you know, 15 hours have a really hard time surviving because a lot of them also aren't open or people are afraid to go to the bookstores. So I would show up there. I would sign books there. They want me to stream it and do like a live or maybe people show up. It's also an opportunity for some of my friends to buy books. Um, but I can easily connect you with my publisher, uh, Penguin Viking, which again, very reputable, biggest publisher in the world. And, um, and why don't you see about working with us on that? Um, and I think I can get you details after this call. And everyone will be like, who's Brooke? <laughs> Where did she come from? I'll be like, Brooke's playing this event and give you the opportunity and, and push it, push it to be great. Like push it from like here. Hey, hey, we're going to need a cool flyer. Hey, here's how we're going to get people in the door. Whatever you want, right? Like 
Some of it I'll go for, some of it I won't. But uh, I don't have an event planner for that event. I mean, there's everyone will will do it, but then I'm gonna I'm not that organized. So let's do that. At, what's that? Now you do. Now I do. So let's try this out um, on this first book event and use it as an opportunity. So you and it's coming up, right? Uh, I'll get you the dates. But use that as an opportunity so you can get in the game because I have a feeling unless I kind of push you to get in the game, you may take a little while to get in the game. Yeah. Well, and not everybody has a, you know, a coach Mike that has a book event coming forward. So it's one of those things where it's like, I can sit here all day and go, all right, where's my coach Mike? Where's my coach Mike? So, well, now that's the great thing is like, now you, when you talk to someone and you talk to a corporation, you'd be like, well, I did this for coach Mike and coach Mike's on Dr. Phil and he's a New York times bestselling author. And all of a sudden you're differentiating yourself from the person who's like, well, I did events in person. Right. So I want to, I want to build your cred and I want to help you. I want to help push you into this and let's figure out how do we stay magical? How do we make it great? How do we make it personalized? How has it become thoughtful? How has it become different than a typical Zoom thing where everyone's just sitting there feeling like they're watching YouTube? I'll play the part. I'll dance to music. You know, I'll let streamers fall down on my head. Whatever you want. It's just, I. someone's got to help me organize it. Right. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I think that's, that's the next step in terms of what we're doing is uh, getting you back into this event planning game. Cause I just, I wanna, I, I'm gonna push you. You're gonna start, you got your first event coming up. I mean, and you better, you, you better get rested. <laughs> and I've actually said that for the last year. I said, you know what, when this stuff actually takes off and changes, it's just gonna be crazy. So this is great. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on Always Evolving. We're going to be in touch uh, really soon. I mean, the next day or so. Yeah. And thank you for doing all you're doing. I love listening to your podcasts. They're so like, you just, you boil it down for people in a way that makes it really easy for everyone to understand and go, this is right in front of my face. Why didn't I think of that? Because well, we're looking all over and not just what's right there. Yeah. We're stuck in our own heads and it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. My favorite thing yeah, what is it? That no crystal ball. You you have got I've gotten rid of my crystal ball because of you. Good. I cannot tell the future. No more fortune telling. We're getting into the facts. Exactly. All right, cool. Well, thanks, Brooke. And Brooke, what is the name of your event planning business? Lilybrook. Got it. So this is a Lilybrook event. This is very mm -hmm. exciting. All right. Well, thank thank you, Brooke, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to Always Evolving. Thanks again, Brooke. All right. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.